guys. Uh, it's Wednesday. You're probably like, kicking back at home, enjoying your life. Uh, you just think of me. I'm here just working away. Getting wonderful things for us. Uh, we're getting into lesson 11. And this thing drives me crazy. Every single video. Uh, we're getting into lesson 11. And we're going to be using the same strategies that we've been using with um, finding common denominators when we add fractions together. But now, what, what? let's go. we talked about today in class you guys I really uh, have noticed through my hundreds and hundreds of years teaching math that the trickiest part about these problems is just when kids leave the whole numbers behind that's really the trickiest part you guys know how to find common denominators and do all that jazz subtract numbers it's no big deal but really, time after time, what I'm finding is that the whole numbers, these poor, sweet whole numbers, just get left behind in the dust. So please be aware of that. Imagine this one just standing here all alone, not showing up in the final difference. Please don't do that. Well, actually, okay. Um, it's not always going to be that case because, of course, we're subtracting sometimes the one when we take something away, the one is no longer. But just remember that these whole numbers count. Don't get too involved in the fractions so that you uh, forget about um, the fact that there's whole numbers because these are mixed numbers. It's mixed with whole number and fractions. So, okay, enough, Missy. I get it. Okay, fine, fine, fine. fine. So I'm going to just go ahead and circle our one and I'm going to bring the one over here. Because what I see is 1 minus no other whole numbers. So 1 minus no other whole numbers is 1. Now we can get into our fractions. So we're looking at 3 tenths minus 1 sixth. Um, one way, one strategy that we like to use for finding a common denominator is skip counting. Do, do, do. Watch me go. I'm skipping. I'm counting. Yep. And I'm going to do six. We have six. Twelve. Eighteen. Six times four is twenty-four. Six times five is thirty. Ah! I see a common denominator. Thirty. Between ten and six. So I'm going to rewrite these fractions as equivalent fractions. But the big slip here is that our denominators are thirty. So what do we multiply 10 by to make it a 30? Well, I multiply 1, 2, 3 times 10 to make it a 30. You guys know whatever's going downstairs must be going on upstairs or else we're going to have problems. 3 times 3 is 9. What do we multiply 6 by to make it a 30? Well, here we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So then we have to look at 1 times 5, which is 30. That's why skip counting um, as a strategy to find common denominators is kind of nice because you just have this information waiting over here for you in the wings for when you might need it. Okay, so here's something interesting that's going on. Now we're asked to take away 30 from 9. Can we take 30 from 9? We cannot. So remember all that nonsense that I was telling you about bringing the one over? We need to bring the one back. This one is actually not going to show up in our final sum. So I need to check myself, Mrs. C, before I wreck our collective selves. Where's my erase? Dink. Never mind. Um, how can I cash in? I'm ready for the pencil back. Ready. I want it back. Do you see? Do you guys see the struggle happening? Oh, there we go. Can, how can I cash this one hole in so that 30, so that I can give 30 to our friend, 30 over 30? Well, we can actually cash in this one hole for 30 30s. Remember that? So now I can rename 1 and 9 30s, 30th, as 30 plus 9 30ths, or 39 30ths. 
And now I can proceed with taking away 30 thirtieths. Because we can absolutely, now that we've unbundled one and transformed one into 30 thirtieths, now 39 is happy to, t to uh, give itself away to 30. Well, 30 just wants 30, so 39 minus 30, we'll still have 9 left over. That's the good news here. So, your final answer, 9 thirtieths. Awesome. Um, let's take a look at another one. Let's choose red. Um, I'm not even going to go through that long-winded speech about not leaving numbers behind. I guess that kind of happens, it happens in lesson 10, but now that we're getting into lesson 11, this is a little bit more advanced, so we might not have that predicament. Um, so let's just rewrite this problem and set our, that's a fraction bar, set ourselves up for finding a common denominator. Three and five, so this is two and one third minus one and one fifth. Three and five, you guys immediately recognize, are not the same number. Very good class. Let's use this strategy, uh, which is multiplying the two denominators together to find a common denominator. 15, super friendly, great. So. A common denominator between 3 and 5 is 15. So we're going to rewrite both of these fractions so that we can find an equivalent fraction uh, with a denominator of 15. So 3 is multiplied by 5 to make a 15. So 3 times 5 on the bottom. You betcha that's happening on the top. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 here, this denominator is multiplied by 3 to make 15. So you bet that's happening on the top as well. 1 times 3 is 3. I was right. So if we were to ignore the whole numbers, what we're looking to do here, you guys, is take 3 fifteenths away from 5 fifteenths. Um, and gosh darn it, I wish it was actually a little bit more complicated, but it's not, so that's fine. So let's just look at whole numbers. 2 minus 1. We're now just evaluating that expression. 2 minus 1 is 1. And then 5 minus 3 is 2 fifteenths. Final answer. We cannot even uh, simplify that. So let's actually two really good examples. Let's take a look at a word problem here, guys. Here we go. We're going to look at this a word problem. Um, but actually, Bill is going to tap out of this, and we are going to replace Bill with Ed. Ed is actually not a he. She is a she. Ed is our very own Emma. Um, she. So, word problems. Here we go. We are going to R D W after we make the adjustments that we need to. So, here's the story. Ed reads one fifth of a book on Monday. She reads two-thirds of the book on Tuesday. If she finishes reading the book on Wednesday, what fraction of the book did she read on Wednesday? Oh, I like it. Let's make a straight line, Mrs. Kellamers. Um, Let's organize this information. Okay, so we've read it. Now let's draw something. That something is going to look different for every problem. The point of drawing something is so that we have a clear visual of what is going on in this problem. So, we have, I mean, this. we could think of this as a calendar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm going to break this up into three chunks, my stars. I'm working at the front desk, and I think my poor uh, line <laughs> drawing skills are even poorer at the front desk. Okay, I'm going to break this calendar into three days. The days in which, or the space in which each day is broken up into is not proportional to the fraction, just FYI. So, Ed, way to go. I wonder what book you're reading, Ed. Um, read one-fifth of a book on Monday. Make sure you uh, have logged these in for eager reader, Ed. Uh, and then she reads two-thirds of the book on Tuesday. And then finished Nito, all done, finished on Wednesday. And we want to know how much of the, 
how much did she read on Wednesday or how much did what fraction of the book did she read on Wednesday in order to finish the book so first we need to figure out hmm what did she read on Monday and Tuesday in order to figure out what did she read on Monday and Tuesday we're going to add Monday and Tuesday's reading up together one-fifth was read on Monday two-thirds was read on Tuesday um, let's go ahead and find a common denominator between five and three. I think this is the same common denominator we just had. Um, so let's go ahead and just multiply five and three together. We'll use that strategy. Five times three is 15. So a common denominator between five and three is 15. Wonderful. And then in order to figure out what our numerators are, as we're finding equivalent fractions to one-fifth and two-thirds, we just have to think, hmm, well, I multiplied five times by three to get 15. Now I need to multiply one by three. Huh? One times three is three. Okay, over to three. I multiplied three times five, recall, to get 15, which means I also need to multiply my two by five, which is 10. We can add 3 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths pretty easily uh, to find 13 fifteenths. So 13 fifteenths were read on Monday and Tuesday. The whole, whole book represented by whole number one is equal to all. Oh, there's Georgie. I told you guys he's sick at home with Mr. Gilmer today. My poor baby. Um, whole number one can be rewritten as 15 fifteenths, right guys? So if she read 13 fifteenths on Monday and Tuesday, all we need to do, and I think a lot of you can do this in your head, is think about the whole 15 fifteenths. 15 and fifteenths and one are, are represent the same amount. Minus 13 fifteenths to result in two fifteenths. So, how much did she read? What fraction of the book did she read on Wednesday? Two fifteenths. Very interesting. Excellent reading, Ed. Um, I want you guys to come in uh, with one of these problems, of course, finished in your math notebook for tomorrow. When you're checking in Secret Word in the morning, I want you to um, tell me what Ed was doing in this problem. What activity was Ed... Uh, doing on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. What was Ed doing in our word problem here? Um, thanks for a great day, you guys. Keep up the great work, and I will see you. I'll actually see you on Friday. You have a guest teacher Thursday, so please be your best selves. Shine bright, you fifth grade stars. I'll see you Friday.